Lisa. Market Monitor this week is James Grant, editor of the popular publication Grant's Interest Rate Observer. And welcome back to Nightly Business Report, Jim. Thank you, Paul. It's nice to be here. On your last visit with us in mid-January, you told us that the Federal Reserve was close to ending its rate hikes, but since then it has boosted rates three more times, quarter point uh, each. Has the Fed overdone it on the upside? It, it wasn't watching. Now, uh, the Fed, uh, Paul, as you know, um, never fails to uh, do too little too late and then too much too long. Um, and I think it's running true to form this time. Uh, we can't know. I don't presume to know what the future holds, but I believe the Fed has overdone it. Okay, so the pendulum has swung too far this time, as usual, uh, you were saying. <laughs> as usual. I, I think the weakness in housing is telltale, and uh, you know, the Fed uh, was looking backwards rather than forward. So the boost, uh, they won't boost again in August, do you think? I doubt they'll go in August, and indeed by year end, I expect them to be cutting rates rather than raising them, Paul. How much do you think they would be cutting by the end of the year? Guess? I don't know. I'd be so happy to get the direction right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, the housing market you just mentioned, it does look like it's in danger, perhaps, it of a hard landing. Green it is green around the gills, no question. And the Fed uh, uh, has its share of blame for this by pressing rates down so low and by instigating a great wave of mortgage borrowing, of borrowing and, and speculation. And the Fed's going to be hard pressed to uh, do anything except watch this landing and sue whether it's soft or hard. I think it's almost beyond its control now. So there's not much they can do to prevent a hard landing. Well, the Fed will react to the difficulties in housing and the economy by, I believe, by cutting rates. Okay, it's only been a few months, but uh, how do you think uh, Ben Bernanke is doing as the Federal Reserve Chief? Well, I, I give him an F, Paul, only for taking the job. You know, he's <laughs> such a smart fellow, a tenured uh, professor at Princeton and all, and. Uh, and yet he chose to get, enter this very unholy and uh, disreputable line of work called price fixing, which is, as you know, what the Fed does for a living. The Fed fixes <laughs> a rate. Now, don't sugarcoat it, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a quick opinion on the stock market. Bullish or bearish there? Well, um, the trouble with the stock market, I believe, is that bargains are so few and far between. I believe in looking for things one by run rather than making cosmic comments on the whole. And um, what I'm so struck by, Paul, is that, uh, you know, your company will miss by a penny and its stock price will be down by, as it were, a pound. People seem to have no conviction, and they ought to. They ought to find a good, cheap stock and then not watch television, except, you know, nightly business reports. Of course. <laughs> On your last visit in January, you made two buy recommendations. Let's see how they've done since then. Third Avenue Value Fund, up 1.5%, not ah. bad at all. And uh, the iShares Japan have been a much higher, 15-plus, uh, but now they're down about 3% from there. But that's uh, not bad. Preservation of capital in a very volatile market. Uh, that's not, I compliment you there. Not bad. Thank you. 2006 uh, uh, even is okay, I guess. All right. How about some new recommendations, Jim? Well, I want to keep us out of trouble uh, even more so now, Paul. I, I want to suggest first uh, the iShares uh, Lehman three to five year treasury bond fund, which as the name suggests is a way to get exposure to the very short end of the treasury market. And if the Fed is going to cut rates, that's a good place to be. Okay, now we did notice today that the 10 year treasury did fall below a 5% yield. Yes. Uh, is that going to uh, continue? I believe so. How far down in the rest of the year do you think that, yes. that yield will be? <laughs> <laughs> Just yes. Again, Paul, the, dir the direction is, is ever so nice to get. I, bl okay. I believe it's going to be meaningful. All right, so you like yeah. SHY is the symbol on that one. How about stocks? Um, stocks, I, I, I think there's value in chicken. Certainly there's, there's taste in chicken. Yes. Um, there are, uh, two stocks have been out of favor, as indeed has been chicken. Uh, one is, uh, is, is Gold Kissed, which is a leading U.S. producer of chicken. The Boy, other the is stock Sadia. has taken it hard, hasn't it? It has. Okay. Uh, fears, fears of avian flu, and so has Sadia, which is the, perhaps the global low-cost producer of chicken. In, it's in headquartered in Brazil. Both okay. these stocks are, are down hard. I think they offer value. Very good. Do you personally own these securities? I do not, Paul. This is a platonic relationship we have with these names. <laughs> okay, very good. Jim, we'll have to wrap it up now, but I want to thank you again for your insights. We appreciate it. Thank you, Paul. Nice to be here. My guest, James Grant of Grant's Interest Rate Observer. And recapping today's market action, a